then the following Sunday come and say what's going on. If you like it, we go again until we build it. It's exciting. It's exciting. If you want to connect during the week, we, we do gym. We do a lot of management on pain management. And, <laughs> and Wednesday we do Zoom. Monday to Friday, 6 o'clock in the morning. We do Zoom. Most of you come along. And, uh, and then we have uh, discipleship on Wednesday night as well. We run that. And then for boot camp coming, all the men, if you're married, you have a husband who needs, who's a bit annoying in the house, <laughs> kick them out, let them come for the boot camp. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Not only are we going to study like what we do, but this time around we're going to have some gym exercise as well. And, uh, and Jacob uh, wants to make us feel the pain. I think he's 17, so he's going to come, 17 year old, make us all be in the pain. So bless you so much, Ali, as you make the decision. Amen. <laughs> bless you, Ali. Amen. The, the, we, we're going to be sending out our flyer tomorrow on Monday. So the man, if you have a man, if you have a boyfriend who is out there, you need him to be straightened. Bring them on three days really good time. After they come there, I can tell you, they'll be washing dishes. <laughs> 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 uh, Lydia, make Neil to come. We make sure it's fine. <laughs> it's a good thing, I tell you. But it's about <laughs> all, we're building a band of brothers. Mm-hmm. We're going into a very uncertain time. I need you. You need me. We need each other. Amen? Amen. We need each other. I need to know I can call John. Speak that. I can who is speak that? I need to know we can work together as men. I know it's there already, but we just want to build it and, and, and grow it. There are a few other new people who joined us, but uh, we want to continue to build them and disciple them and work together. Please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis, uh, chapter number two. I'll take you through something today. I'll, I'll try and go a little bit of African today, get a bit excited because I'm so passionate about resurrection. Amen. I love resurrection. Resurrection made us who we are. Resurrection. My goodness. Muhammad did not rise from the dead. All these people did not rise from the dead. Only Jesus did. Genesis 22, it says, On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 2 to 3. Please, if you're there, turn your back. I'm just trying to build something slowly, slowly and slowly. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. It says, on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because it, and because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. God had created and made. If you've been with me and known me for years, you've heard me speak about the same word in a different way. But I want to try and highlight something about the book of Genesis uh, based on the presence of God. You've heard me mention this many times. The presence of God was in the Garden of Eden. That's where the presence of God was. When Adam sinned, God had to take them, kick them out of the Garden of Eden. And so he put an angel to girl to protect the Garden of Eden. And so the presence of God moved from the Garden to the mountain. You have to mention that before. That's why Moses had to go to Mount Ararat. They had, Abraham had to go to Mount Ararat. Moses had to go to Mount Sinai. Abraham had to go sacrifice in a mountain. Why? Because the presence of God had moved from the Garden of Eden because of sin and rebellion into the mountains. In the Old Testament, you had them worshipped in the mountains. Every sacrifice was done in the mountain. And then, in Exodus, Moses went up to the mountains to go get the ta- uh, tabern- uh, the Ten Commandments. When he came down, he found that they were sacrificing. They were sacrificing and uh, uh, worshipping an idol. So Moses took the tablets and he smashed them on the floor. On the floor, he broke the, the Ten Commandments, he broke the tablets. And the 
Bible says Moses was angry. And God was not happy as well. And God says, I don't want to dwell up the mountain. I want to be among them. So the presence of God moved from the mountain to the tabernacle, to the tent meeting. Because God says, now I don't want to dwell in the mountain anymore. So he told Moses to build. And Moses began to build. He told Moses the pattern. This length and this width. Measurements. Are we together? Yeah. And so he built something. And it was, it was measured. It was outer court, inner court, and holy of holies. It was all measured. The holy of holies was square. The holy of holies had different emblems, which I'm going to talk about later. And then there was the outer court. So it was like a tent that any time they wanted to sacrifice, only one person would go in to atone for the sins of the nation. And that was the high priest. And you would only go there once a year. And you would only go in there with a chain or a rope tied to his ankle. In other words, in case he dies in there, they will pull him out. So this, this block had um, apple or um, uh, fruits on the hem of his, of, his, um, of his rope. He also had bells. Why did they have the bells? Because when he's moving in there, they could tell the block is still alive. In case the bells are not ringing, in case there's no sound, he's dead. In case there's no sound, the church is dead. Anyway, they pull him out. And then he's gone. And then there was a smoke, because he used to be the smoke, that's where the Catholic got their stuff from. And then they had all this stuff going on. And so it continued for a while. And everywhere they wanted to go, they had the, the Ark of the Covenant. They would take it everywhere. And everywhere they went, Israel won the war. Everywhere they take. Unfortunately, they came into a problem with the Philistines. Sin and stuff that went on, and the Ark of the Covenant was taken from them during the time of David, and it was taken to a place called, I think, Ashdod, uh, the Philistine city. And so David had to bring back the Ark, and God says, I don't want to stay again in the tent meeting. I want to, I want to build, I want you to build a house. David said, I want to build your house, and God says, No, 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 you cannot build me a house. Your hands are stained with blood. He says he chose his son, who was not a legitimate child. Solomon was an illegitimate child. That's another sermon. So the, the presence of God came from the garden, from the garden to the mountain, from the mountain to the tent. Tabernacle of the tent meeting. From there, Solomon began to build uh, the whole temple. It took Solomon 67 years to build it, roughly. And the materials came from Africa, from uh, Queen of Sheba, who was coming from uh, Ethiopian Empire. The wool, the gold, the silver. And they went through a place called Jok and Nineveh. And they two became cities because of the materials and the trade between the Ethiopian Empire and, 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 uh, and Solomon. So it took them a long time. And finally, temple was built. And the Bible says the presence of God moved from the tabernacle of the tent meeting into the temple. If you read the Bible, it says in the scripture, it says the presence of God was so strong that even the priests would not stand. They all were crawling. The worshippers were crawling on their knees. Hello, somebody. So the presence of God moved from the garden, from the garden to the mountain, from the mountain to the tabernacle of the tent meeting, from the tabernacle of the tent meeting. To the house built by Solomon, the magnificent, beautiful gold house. And then there was temple prostitution. There was chaos in the house. There was a lot of things happening in the temple. There was all kinds of stuff happening. And God sent the prophets, the minor prophets, the major prophets. And all they came about talking about the problems that are happening in the temple. And God comes in the book of Malachi. The last word in Malachi is the word curse. God ends the last word. The last word in the Old Testament is the word curse. And God says, I look back to the covenant I had with my servant Moses in Horeb. God is not happy. He says, hey. And so the presence of God moved from the mount, from the, uh, from the, uh, from the garden of Eden to the mountain, from the mountain to the tabernacle of the temple. 
from the tabernacle came meeting, God is not happy at all. So between Matthew and Malachi is over 540 years of silence. God never said nothing. There was nothing. In your Bible, it's probably one, one, one page or maybe two pages. I don't know which other Bible is. For others, it's three pages. But that one page is 500 years of silence. No move of the Holy Ghost. No prophecy. No seer. No unction of the Holy Ghost. Silence. And then in the New Testament, it starts by so and so begat so and so, and so and so begat so and so, so and so begat so and so. Matthew comes as a New Testament writer, but he's a, he's a Jewish, with a Jewish angle. Because Matthew captures the Torah, and he begins to capture the story of Jesus, who is the new Israel. And he begins to talk about so and so begat so and so, so and so begat so and so. He begins to bring the genealogy. And then he captures Matthew 5, where he brings us back to Deuteronomy, where Matthew captures what happens in the mountain, the Torah. But he now narrates it with a new version about blessed. Why? Because the last word in the Old Testament was the word curse. The new Old Testament ended with a curse. But this new Israel that kicks in, comes in and begins with the word blessed. Why? Because it cancels the old and begins with the new. And it says blessed are those, and blessed are those, blessed are those. And then he walks into the temple that was built by Solomon. And he looks at them, and he looks at them, and he comes in, gets his whip. And most of you know what happened there. He whipped them and turned the tables. And he stands and makes a bold statement. He says, he says, I will destroy this house, this temple. And I'll build a new one in three days. So the presence of God moved from the garden of Eden to the mountain, from the mountain to the tabernacle of the ten meeting. From there, Jesus comes and says, I will destroy this one. They were angry. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? They were angry because this is what our fathers built. Because the temple was everything for a, a Jewish person. Yeah, tell Jesus, I'm going to destroy this and I'm going to build a new one in three days. When he died on the cross, he says, Hello. the top 
you have these ignorant Christians, the, the church should do this. The church should do this. The church should do this. You are the church. You are the church. You are the ecclesia. The church should do this. You've got people say that. The church should do this. You are the church. You are the ecclesia. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost living in the inside of you. I had somebody pray the other day and say, God, release a pandemic of grace. I said, oh, wow, I've got to check that one out. Release a pandemic of grace. <laughs> Do you know you've got something more powerful than a pandemic? Yeah. Wow. It's called the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look defeated. Don't look chickened out. Don't look like, man, oh. you've got something inside of you. Yeah. Oh. Even demons are getting scared. Every time you rise up, we've got so many ignorant kings. Yeah. We've got so many ignorant believers. Yeah. Greater is he that is in the inside. Not inside. You see the words we've been led to sing today. Some of you, if we read that those words alone, we just sing. We just sing those words. Just, just, just think about those words. Med meditate on the words that came up here. I was like, wow. Come on. This is our God.
when you sit on the beach, you hear the waves. They just worship Jesus. Everything, creation, begins to glorify Him. Your cats, your dogs, they know Him. They do. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So worship is not work. Worship is resting. Resting in His goodness. Worship, uh, number seven, the, the, uh, the, uh, number two, Sabbath also meant the, the end. It means ending of work because whenever God did something, He finished. God does not some does not do something that He doesn't finish. I say all the time, God does not start something that He doesn't finish. I say all the time, God does not start something that He doesn't finish. Everything He started, He has to finish. Why? Because His name is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Anything that God starts, he has to finish. The finishing may not look like what we want it to look like, but he will finish. Amen. <coughs> Are you still here? Yeah. The last thing about the Sabbath, the Bible says in the Genesis chapter 2, he says he blessed it and he sanctified it. I want to tie that to today and then we close and go home. God says he blessed the seventh day, the Sabbath. I'm not trying to get you to
how we rejoice, how we rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. What a good song to sing every morning. This is the day. Say, pray over yourself and say, this is the day. I shall, don't say I will say, I shall rejoice. Every morning you wake up, you say, this day will not rule me, I'll rule over this day. Amen. So the day began to rule over man. So man became a subject of the day. Instead, the day became becoming a subject of man. And yet God has called us to have a rule over the day. I tell you what, the day should be subject to you. The Bible says, as mercies are new every morning. Amen. The problem we have with believers, we allow the day to put pressure on us. Some of us have got these Monday blues. I don't know who came up with the Monday blue and a Tuesday green and a Wednesday yellow. All these are just coin psychological things to make us feel fresh. You know what? Every day must bow to the name of Jesus. I was somebody. Say, my day, this day is God's day. Whether for bills, whether I will never allow it to control my emotions. Come on. Greater is He. Come on. I can do all things. There are some people you can't see them in the morning because they are very grumpy. <laughs> Others is maybe late afternoon. Ten cups of coffee for them to be okay. I need the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't allow the day to rule you. Yes. Take charge of the day. Hey. Yes. Monday, I'm on fire. Tuesday, oh, oh. Wednesday. <laughs>
your survival in yesterday's manner. You need today's manner. You cannot be a Christian living from Sunday to Sunday. You need to live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday yeah. with the rainbow of God. Yeah. Hello? So Peter, the problem happens is this. So what happens is Jesus does. So he promised them, I'll make you guys, you're going to be all hopes were on Jesus. Everything was said to them. Jesus is going to be, you know, the king. They believe Jesus was going to be the king. Peter has left his business. He had a fishing business. He had a transport business. He left his business and followed this man. Matthew had a uh, tax collecting business. Was a, was a, was a, an accountant. He left everything for Jesus. And then on Good Friday, the guy, they had put all their lottery tickets on. Dies. What happens when everything you put your heart on doesn't work? What will you do? What happens after all you've chased all your life? sometimes is when people don't compliment you. When you're so quiet. You know you're good, but no one compliments you. You see? They were in a place and Jesus, the one they had followed, was not there. There was a silence of their destiny. Saturday morning, Peter didn't know what's going to happen. The boats are gone. The fishing industry is gone. Receivership, everything is gone. The man he had followed, defended with a sword, chopped somebody here. He's gone. <laughs> what are you going to do? Sometimes we depend 
happen when we don't have people of prophet by our side. I say one more time. What will happen when we don't have people to prophet by our side? There are people who are so dependent on people. You cannot stay alone. You must have people around you. What will happen when you don't have people around you? When there's no prophecy.
pastor you expect to bring good news. He's the one who's going to bring good news. She was a prostitute. She was delivered from demons. But she had some good news for the apostle. I love somebody. Never write anyone off. Never ever. Never write anyone off. There was a knock on the door. I tell you, never write, never write, you see, never allow anyone to judge you based on bad seasons. Yeah. Yeah. You may not be a millionaire today, yeah. but you are something, something is happening. Come on. Yeah. Never write anyone because they have nothing. Yeah. Never, or because of their past failures or mistakes. Come on. I would never do that. And you should never do that. There was a knock on the door. Next thing was a woman that stood there and she says, something has happened. 5 a.m. in the morning, she knocked on the door. She said, say, uh, uh, I have seen something. What is it? Uh, I've seen something. What is it? He says, he's alive. Uh, what, what, what are you talking about? He's alive. And Peter says, what, what are you saying? He is at 5 o'clock in the morning. He says, are you high? Are you, are you, are you, are you, do you have a hangover? What's going on with you? Are, are the seven demons back in your head? There's something wrong with this one. Five o'clock in the morning. Have some Panadol. Take some Coca Cola. Remove some hangover. I think you got some. You're hallucinated. No, no, no. There's something I've seen. He's alive. Come on, somebody. He's alive. Uh, and Peter says, No, no, no. Please be clear. Why? Because I, I'm still disappointed. I'm still offended. I am done with Christianity. I am done with church. I'm done with all this churchy, Christianese, hallelujah, shanda, shanda, and all this baramandi stuff. I am tired of this stuff. What are you talking about? What is all going on? And the woman said, no, 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 he's alive. When Peter heard that, the Bible says he reigned. <laughs> he reigned, hallelujah. He reigned, he says, I'm going to run to see my promise. I came this morning to encourage somebody here. In the midst of your disappointments, in the midst of your frustrations and offense, I've got good news to tell somebody here. He is alive. He is alive. Death has been defeated. Cancer has been defeated. All COVID-19 has been defeated. Demons and powers of darkness have been defeated. I may not be perfect enough to tell you the news. I may not be good looking enough to tell you the news, but I've got good news anyway. That Jesus Christ is alive. The Bible says Peter reigned. He reigned because his promise is alive. Some people may not understand why you ran. I'm not saying physically, but I'm talking about your passion for Jesus. They may not understand why you're so passionate, but they don't understand you've suffered through disappointment. I've suffered enough of frustration. Enough is enough. Yeah. My Redeemer liveth. Yeah. My Messiah is alive. The one that promised me is alive. Because I know my parents can forsake me. My wife can forsake me. My children can reject me. My friends can abandon me. But there is one who will never leave me or forsake me. His name is Jesus. He's a friend that sticks closer to me than even a brother. That's why Peter ran early in the morning. My it was not 10 o'clock in the morning. It was not midday. It was 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh. He rose up and he ran. He says, my promise is alive. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I have overcome the, uh, the frustrations and disappointments of study. And I'm running because my Messiah is alive. I want to tell you this morning, Jesus is alive. Yeah. After the silence yeah. of Saturday, after the, 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 the disappointments of Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday morning is coming. Mm -hmm. After the solitude of Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday morning is coming. And that's why I'm came to tell somebody here, as long as Jesus is alive, yeah. as long as Jesus is alive, there is hope for you here. Yeah. Yeah. There is hope for you in the name of Jesus. Let's go the other our feet. I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. As long as Jesus is alive, there is hope for you. Yeah. There is hope for you. There is hope for you. Let's have some music. There is hope for you. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor. neighbor. You're looking at a miracle. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You see, it doesn't matter what 
years. Some of you are going through a very shaky time, either in your finances or either socially. I believe in God, that God is going to release such a grace. Do you know in the times where there is so much struggle, that's when the light of God shines? You know? I know we're going through a time in the nations, in the world, and COVID and all that. But you know what? Jesus is more superior. Yeah. Not even COVID-19. Whatever they call it. I don't know their names. There's so many other names. But Jesus is more superior. Come on, come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's declare the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. If you need prayer, come to the altar. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. You're here. You're saying enough, enough, enough of church. Enough of God. Enough of everything. I need God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you one more thing? The greatest word you can ever have, the most powerful word, the most powerful word in, in the world, the most powerful word in the world, Hoche, one of the most powerful words in the uh, word in the world is the word H E L P. Help. Help. One of the most powerful words. Now, one of the most powerful words you can ever utter in your world, in your mouth, is the word hell. Go check. David has everything in the palace, but he says, I lift up my eyes to the hill. Where does my hell? Some people die because they didn't refuse to hide for hell. We are here. Thank you. 